Our first speaker today is the founder of Ashoka University and Central Square Foundation, a philanthropic organization focused on systemic reform in K-12 education in India. He is an MBA with distinction from Harvard University and a dual bachelor's holder with magna cum laude honors from Yale University. He is on the India Advisory Board of Harvard and a member of Yale's Development Council. He worked for 20 years in the investment management business and ran one of India's leading private equity funds, Chris Capital. In June 2012, he left his full-time role at Chris Capital to work on education reform in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Mr. Ashish Thavanu. Uh, thanks, Gaurav. Um, I have to thank Survi first, who's sitting back there, because it's thanks to Survi that I actually met with Ravi. Uh, I was reaching out because at that time we were interested in the area of school leadership at CSF and uh, Ravi was leading the work on school leadership and edu educational leadership at the Azim Premji Foundation. And uh, we had a, a beer in Bangalore and got to know each other and at that time the discussion really was around the idea of education leadership uh, and then later I discovered that Ravi had a passion for management and leadership in the social sector at large. Um, many of the thoughts that he shared with me resonated uh, with my own experience at Central Square Foundation and working in the development sector over the last five years in particular. So I think the idea of ISDM was born, as we discussed earlier, about a year ago, and uh, two, four very able founders have sort of come together under uh, Ravi's leadership uh, to pull this together. And Pramat and my role really has to been to be um, as supportive as possible and to share a number of our experiences from Ashoka and elsewhere that we can, um, so that we can assist ISDM, particularly in the early years as they build this institute. So why is this so important and why now? I think this is critical because we think, as, as most of you know, the whole development sector, the NGO sector in particular, I think is starting to explode. Um, there is an influx of talent coming to the sector. There's an influx of money that has come in, particularly with CSR. Uh, there's been a quantum jump in funds. And we're seeing that several organizations are ramping up very, very quickly. Um, I'm on the board of Teach for India, and, and several Teach for India people are here. And it's an example of an organization. Anu is, is the chair of the board. It's gone from literally scratch to a 60 crore roughly 60 crore budget in an eight year period of time. It just shows that in such a short period of time, and money is not the only measure, but in, in such a short period of time, an organization can scale up and start to have impact. Or even Kevalia, that is a, a 10 year old organization, Maso Menos right now, is, is now a 40 plus crore organization already. But that's not true of most of the sector. Most of the sector, it's a bunch of tiny not-for-profits, uh, that never really scale, that really are always struggling for talent. Um, they aren't able to develop a second line of leadership or a third line of leadership, uh, etc. And today the money is available. So it's really, if they had the ability to pull in the right talent, I think they can get the funds to scale up. So the biggest constraint, uh, I believe, is, is really talent. And it's not just talent coming into the sector, but really talent that's groomed to play managerial roles and leadership roles uh, in this sector. I also think it's an interesting moment because there's an influx of a lot of young people coming in through the Gandhi Fellowship, through Teach for India, through the Young India Fellowship. A number of these fellowships have brought people into the development sector. They're young, uh, they come in, their first job at a variety of different organizations, and many of them I've interacted with, and they're really struggling with what to do next. Should they be doing an MBA? Should they be going to public policy school? Should they go to education school? Should they go abroad? Should they stay in India? Unfortunately, there haven't been too many options in India, so many of them want to go abroad. And then often, because it's very expensive, people will find a suboptimal solution within India. And as all of you know, you know even at the management schools, whilst they would, some would think they'd be well-placed to do this, they really don't have a program that fits people who want to be in the development sector. Because when you go to an MBA school in India, whether it's the IIMs or ISB or any top school, or even a second-tier school, 
you're really getting trained to go into the corporate sector. You really would have no understanding of how the development sector works. You'd be a fish out of water when you come into the sector out of that institute. So really that's, and, and there are some organizations serving the development sector, but I think, and they're doing good work, but they play a different role. I think this, for instance, has been around since 1936, has done great work, has produced some great alum, but it's primarily focused on you know, developing social workers, and now there are nine different schools at TIS, but there isn't as explicit a focus on development management. Uh, or IRMA, which started out with the idea of really getting people into the development sector, really those people with rural marketing skills are primarily being picked up by Nestle and Glaxo and, and others. The vast majority are going to the corporate sector. So where is that institute that's playing this role? And I think as we have this discussion with Ravi and Gaurav and Suparna and, and Sharad, I think we realize there's a real opportunity to craft development management as a discipline. So not only as a program, a teaching program for students that come out and, and go into a sector, but also as a discipline for research, doing academic work, because the academic work that's done at a management institute, a typical management, very, very different. And there's a certain kind of research that needs to be done that should be housed at an institute like this. So we saw a real opportunity, and we felt that the timing was right to start an institute like this. And the other big thing I want to point out is that there's a great room to collaborate in setting up an ent entity like this. Uh, many of you, and some there are some Young India Fellows here, the Young India Fellowship was started in 2011. Uh, we conceived the idea in 2010. Pramat and I were sitting around the table when that happened. And Pramat was really the first dean of the Young India Fellowship. And within a very short period of time, it took off. And the model really was to create a, a one-year program to build future leaders for India. And to take that one year and cut it up into eight semesters where students would get exposure to a variety of different disciplines. Clearly, ISDM is different. But the structure in many ways is the same. The structure of basically one year, a very intensive year, cutting it up into eight different semesters. There are two semesters where you do a lot of practical work in the field, but the other six semesters you're actually doing 24 courses. Uh, and Ravi will talk about the details of that. But the idea was to create it in a manner where you can pull in visiting faculty, so academics, but also practitioners. Because there are a number of practitioners doing very interesting work, who could be uh, faculty as part of this institute. So this one-year program, these 24 courses, and there'll be more than 24 courses because there'll be a bunch of electives as well, will really pull in academics and practitioners to this institute to deliver uh, this course. In terms of students, students will come from a variety of different places, but I think the idea really was to get students who have experience, some experience in the development sector maybe three to five years of experience, who are then looking to get into a managerial position, a leadership position, who want to stay in the development sector. You know, those students who come with that question of what should I do next? Should I go for a public policy degree or an MBA degree, etc.? I think this is right for that student who really wants to, or that person with some experience who wants to stay in the sector. The Institute will also consider some students who come straight out of college, who are looking at you know, going into development are serious about it. And clearly, some portion of students would also be those who are making a switch from the corporate sector, uh, but have shown a great deal of commitment. Because the idea here is not to go deep into one vertical, like education or health, etc., but really to build the future managers and leaders for the development sector at large. They will get exposed to some of the key areas within development, but the idea is not to go very deep in, in any one of those areas, but to get some of the functional skills, managerial skills for the sector. So really we view this as a big collaborative exercise where there's the opportunity to pull in a variety of different people. Uh, and I would really encourage you all to provide feedback after you've heard what you've heard today, uh, and also see if there's some way you can help in terms of pointing us towards faculty and especially in terms of potential students. Um, you know, if we can get this first batch of 60 students in the one-year program to be an outstanding batch, 
the brand will, the word of mouth itself will travel and the brand will be built, at least on the teaching side for this institute. So that's a key ask from all of you. Uh, I will just close by saying that, you know, I think that this is a big execution task. Uh, the founders have been working day and night. We do these monthly sit down meetings where we sit down at 7.30 a.m. at my house to go through stuff. So I've been torturing them ever since they met me because I don't think they're used to 7.30 a.m. meetings, but they do it willingly. Uh, and I've gone into a lot of detail in terms of looking at not just the curriculum, they sought uh, advice from experts, but also looking at the physical location that will be located in the NCR uh, to start with because we believe that the largest ecosystem is here in the NCR. Um, and uh, we're now at the stage where uh, the team has been doing a number of dialogues, has even started doing some exec ed short courses. But this one year program will really be the flagship course which will be launched in the summer of next year. So it's not that far away. I'll just close by saying that the mission really is to develop a certain kind of leader or manager for the development sector. An individual who is empathetic, caring, values uh, driven, uh, somebody who's also action oriented and outcome oriented, and who really will collaborate. There's not enough collaboration in the sector. And I hope that the graduates of ISBM really further collaboration uh, and have the ability to deal with the ambiguity and the complexity of this sector. So I'm very excited to be associated with ISBM, and I hope that many of you uh, will want to learn more and we'll be able to contribute in some way. Thank you.